Welcome and thank you for joining us. I'm Catherine Ippolito. I'm going to be talking with Trish Kazakis. We're registered dietitians and members of the Genesee Dietetic Association. Trish will be answering questions about nutrition tips and feeding for your 6 to 12 month old baby. 292 Baby is a community collaboration administered by Monroe Community College. Trish, what should we be feeding the infants aged 6 to 12 months? Great question. A lot of moms and dads think it might be a good time to start cow's milk, but actually cow's milk doesn't have all the nutrients that a baby needs to grow fully. So we want to continue offering either breast milk or iron fortified formula until the baby turns one year old. Well Trish, when should parents start solid foods? Well, according to the American Academy of Pediatrics, it's a good idea to wait until a baby is four to six months old. Part of the reason is because the baby's body is developed at that point and they can handle solid foods. If we start them too soon before that, they actually could be more likely to develop food allergies. What skills do babies need in order to feed? In order to take solid food, a baby needs to be able to hold the solid food in their mouth and swallow. But before they can do that, there's a few developmental skills that they need to have. First is they need to be able to sit in a high chair without too much support and be able to hold their head without any support. They also need to keep the food in their mouth in order to swallow it. And all babies have a tongue thrust reflex that forces their tongue to push the food out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. Usually they outgrow this around four to six months, but until they do, it makes it hard for the baby to keep the food in their mouth and swallow without choking. Another thing is you want to look for the baby to be able to open their mouth when they see food coming near them with a spoon. Mm -hmm. Is there a specific first salad food that parents should start with? Yes. A great option is iron fortified rice cereal, specifically for babies. The reason this is a good choice is it's something that we can mix up with breast milk or formula, making it very thin so it's easier for the baby to swallow and hold in their mouth. Mm -hmm. Trish, are there any suggestions on offering cereal to a baby? Yes, there are a few things moms and dads can do to get ready for those first feedings. Number one, continue to offer breast milk or formula as you would normally, but maybe pause in the middle of that normal feeding. The reason for this is we want the baby to be hungry, but not overly hungry. Mm -hmm. At that point, place the baby in a high chair and go ahead and mix up the rice cereal. A good combination would be one tablespoon of dry rice cereal to about three to four tablespoons of the breast milk or formula. Mm -hmm. At that point, we want to make sure that we're offering the cereal off of a spoon. Placing the cereal in a bottle could cause the baby to eat too much or possibly choke. Mm -hmm. When you're sitting at the table with your baby, you want to sit directly across from the baby and hold the spoon out in front of their mouth. Let them explore. They might want to touch and feel the cereal. And then wait for them to open their mouth before you place the spoon in their mouth. This gives them time and practice, again, to learn to hold mm -hmm. that food in their mouth and swallow. Mm -hmm. What should parents expect may happen when they're offering cereal to their baby? Okay, a few things is to remember to be patient because very likely your baby's going to be messy in the beginning. But rest assured, they will get less messy as time goes on. Just like anything, it takes time and practice for your baby to learn a new skill. Don't worry too much about how much they're eating at this time. It's more important that you give them the practice and the skills to learn how to eat. Watch for cues too from your baby. They will give you signals that they're full. Things like turning their head away or arching their back are signs that they've had enough. When you see those signs, just stop feeding and try again either later or another day. Anytime that you feel that your baby is not engaged or not interested in feeding, especially in those early stages, don't worry about it. Just try again the next day. What about other foods, Trish? Is there a choice between starting with next with fruits or vegetables? That's a great question. What we like to recommend is starting with vegetables before fruits. This is because it increases the likelihood that your baby will accept vegetables. 
Now, with this, you have a lot of options. Some folks wonder whether homemade or prepared or jarred baby foods are better. And really, the option is what's best for you. What you can do at home is take canned or cooked vegetables and then simply mash them up and offer those to your baby. This is a great option because they are free of additives and they tend to be less expensive, but it does require some additional planning and work. Therefore, you do have the option of using prepared or jarred baby foods. This way you can just conveniently pull them out when you're ready to feed your baby. What about fruits, Trish? All right, after your baby has tried a wide variety of vegetables, now it's time to think about introducing fruits. The best choices are 100% fruit products. Things like applesauce that are already uh, mashed up, or even taking a ripe banana and mashing it up at home are great options. Um, things like uh, the desserts or um, puddings, they're not a great idea because they have extra ingredients that could lead to a food allergy. So you really want to stick with products that are 100% fruit so your baby's getting the nutrients they need to grow. Trish, how much would you offer? Again, you want to start with a smaller amount, maybe only one or two tablespoons. If you are using the jarred option, go ahead and take that one or two tablespoons out and put it in a small bowl. The reason for this is if your baby doesn't finish that, bacteria from her mouth will get into the food and if you offered that to her later, she could end up being sick. So take a small amount out and place the remainder of the food in the refrigerator. Then, just like normal, sit across from her and offer it off the spoon. Well, this is exciting, Trish. The babies are eating cereal and vegetables and fruits. And what's next? Well, the next thing would be protein-rich foods. These would be things like plain cooked meat, chicken, ground beef. But they're things that have a little bit more texture than what the child has been used to at this point, but we still need it to be a little bit less than chunks. They're not quite ready for those finger foods. What you can even consider are even dried, cooked beans that are mashed up, or even a cooked egg yolk. They do have some convenience items that are called combination dinners. These would be a pureed meat mixed with other things like a noodle. This isn't a great option for you because for your money you're getting less protein and you're also getting less nutrition. But if you're concerned about whether your baby will tolerate a pureed meat, think about mixing it with one of their favorite fruits or vegetables or even cereal so they get that same kind of effect. Trish, when can babies start finger foods? Around nine months, babies are ready to pick up foods with their fingers. So think about small things like O-shaped cereals, cooked noodles, cooked vegetables, or even cubes of cheese, broken up pieces of rice cake. These are easy things for the baby to grasp and start feeding themselves. They also might want to explore with a spoon or a baby fork. Just remember, those early feedings can be messy, so just be patient and give her time to practice. Trish, it seems like we're hearing more and more about food allergies. What can parents do to avoid food allergies in their baby? There are a few things that parents actually can do. The first one, remembering to wait until the baby is four to six months old before we start solid foods. The next thing is each time we introduce a new food, just start with one food for about five to seven days and watch how your baby responds. If she is tolerating the food, then you can add a new food. So for example, we were talking about the rice cereal. Just offer that for five to seven days. If she's tolerating it fine, then you can think about adding something like an oatmeal cereal. There are a few key signs you want to watch for to see if she may be allergic to a food. Those signs are things like wheezing, developing a skin rash, stomach aches, or diarrhea. If your baby develops any of these symptoms, stop feeding that food and contact your health care provider. Now while we've talked about a variety of foods that you want to introduce to your baby, there are a few foods that are more commonly known to produce a food allergy and should be held off on being introduced until your baby is a year old. Those foods are cow's milk, nuts, nut products, and peanut butter, egg whites, citrus fruits and citrus juices, strawberries, 
shellfish, chocolate, and honey. Remember, these are foods that after she's a year old, you could think about introducing, but you've got a wide variety of other foods to start from. You've done a great job telling parents about solid foods and finger foods. What about liquids? Great question. When the baby's around six months old, this is a time you can think about introducing a cup. Great options to start with are things that she's familiar with, like breast milk, iron fortified formula, or even a little bit of plain water. A big question that parents have is what about juice? Well, I would recommend waiting to introduce juice and only offer it when you're introducing the cup. The reason for this is if we put juice in the baby's bottle, there's a higher chance that they'll take more juice than they need and actually could set them up for dental caries. Just like we mentioned with eating solid foods, there can be messes here, so be patient. Think about just putting a small amount of the liquid in the cup so that will minimize your spills until your baby develops the skill of drinking from a cup a little bit more efficiently. And getting back to that juice, we don't want to offer too much. Limit it to no more than four to six ounces per day. And for some babies, regular juice might be a little bit too sweet. So you may think about diluting it with some water. And citrus juices like grapefruit and orange are better held off until the baby is a year old. What are some final tips parents need to remember when feeding babies? One of the greatest things to remember is be patient. Because as we mentioned, there's going to be some messes and there needs to be time for your baby to learn these skills. The other thing to remember is it takes time for a baby to get used to new foods. Oftentimes they need to try a new food up to a dozen times before they decide if they like it or not. And remember, your baby may actually have different tastes than you. So don't let your own food preferences prevent you from offering a food to your baby. You might not like green beans, but you might be surprised that your little one does. So remember to be open to letting her try new foods. Babies' brains don't grow by themselves. But when you sing to your baby, talk to your baby, and play with your baby, her brain cells learn to grow. So sing to your baby, talk to your baby, play with your baby. Two Nine Two Baby is a community collaboration of many community partners, and it's administered by Monroe Community College. What you're seeing is a list of those who are supporting or have supported the efforts of Two Nine Two Baby to reach out to help support parents and caregivers of infants. We would like to thank each of these contributors for their own unique contribution to this effort.